Well, the Bloodhound Project started around eight years ago, who highlighted the biggest single challenge, not just in the UK, not even just in Europe, globally, the biggest technical challenge we have is getting the right young people inspired about science and technology, the STEM subjects. Because that high technology, low carbon world of the future is where we all want to finish up. And it is the young people at school today who are going to build and live in that world. In very simple terms, I got involved in Project Bloodhound simply because it was there and because we all saw the potential to bring science and technology to a life and we all wanted the challenge of pushing back those boundaries of creating something just extraordinary. Well, this car literally has the best power technology in any land speed record car ever. We're incredibly lucky. We're, we're very grateful to the support of Rolls-Royce uh, to actually help us with the world's best military jet engine. The Rolls-Royce EJ200, an extraordinary bit of technology. I'm in the Royal Air Force. I've flown in Eurofighter Typhoon. This is a Typhoon engine. So we're going to run this EJ200. That will give us 90 kilonewtons, about nine tons of thrust. So the jet engine itself would struggle to get there. In fact, it's actually going to go outside its design envelope. To do that, we also have a hybrid rocket motor. The world's leader in this field right now is NAMO, a Norwegian company, and we're incredibly lucky to have their support. Another 120 kilonewtons of thrust. So that's 90 from the jet, 120 from the rocket total of over 200 kilonewtons. That is the, and it's not a perfect equation, but it's sort of the equivalent of about 135,000 thrust horsepower. What does that mean? It's the same as 180 Formula One cars. What does that mean? I, I can't picture 180 Formula One cars. It's a very, very big number. And to give you some idea of just the rocket capability, we will be pumping one cubic meter of rocket oxidizer, this concentrated hydrogen peroxide. So that's one cubic meter will be pumped in at 76 times atmospheric pressure, 1,000 pounds per square inch. Hence, we have a five liter V8 supercharged Jaguar engine just to turn the pump motor. That's how powerful the rocket system is. We have Jaguar's biggest road car engine just to turn the pump. It is an extraordinary system. So we have, and of course we have the world's best motorsport industries in the UK, eight out of the 10 Formula One teams. I work in aerospace for the Royal Air Force. We have one of the world's best aerospace industries. And separately, we also have an incredibly powerful academic series of institutions in this country. We don't, you know, in, uh, in the UK, we don't just teach students. There's also a lot of research work done and a lot of joint work with industry. To take wheels which are going to travel at 1,000 miles an hour on the surface, they are solid metal wheels. The interaction between the wheel and the desert, that that level of grip is what affects the stability and the control I have in the car. No one has ever traveled at this kind of speed on a desert surface before. So the modeling is done at another one of our leading universities. It's, it's being done at Southampton University, which is one of our leading universities for how boat hulls travel at very high speed on water our wheel will have a similar dynamic. And the initial modeling we looked at for different materials in the, whether we make the wheel out of aluminium or titanium, a lot of the expertise came from our leading university in material science in Sheffield. But it's not just about UK technology. We also are using the best technology wherever we find it. So for instance, the rocket technology, the world's leaders are NAMO in Norway. We don't make hybrid rockets in this country to the, uh, in the same quantity and quality, we don't need them. Where the, uh, the, the two wishbones stick out the side of the car, there is a diagonal rod you can see sticking out between the, uh, the two wheels. That's called the pull rod. That pull rod by itself is stressed to take 16 tonnes of load. And that rear lower chassis, all of the steel components and all of the structures were made by Armada. To give you some idea of how many components, it took us over 20,000 rivets just to join them all together because that's what's keeping me safe, that's what's keeping our car together at high speed. Well, we, we are a very, very unusual, no, we're not just unusual, we are a unique world land speed record project. To create an engineering adventure that will capture the world's imagination, made people ask, how do they do that? It's the only question a 10-year-old needs to ask to start that first step on the journey to understanding the importance of science and technology and engineering in their world of tomorrow. So we are sharing all of that live as we do it 
and also through an education program, not only in the UK, also in South Africa where we're going to run the car, and increasingly we're seeing that around the world. And we're running schools competitions, the Model Rocket Car Challenge, for young school kids to attempt a world record. Now that was done in the UK, the unlimited world record was increased to over 850 kilometers an hour a couple of years ago. There was a world record set two weeks ago. Some of our team were out in Brazil, or at least you can compete and design the technology and measure it against your, your other classmates, against other schools, against schools all over the world as part of a global competition. To bring that science and technology to life for kids of all ages, from six years old to 96 years old. The magic of the science and technology and the excitement of the how does that work is what Project Bloodhound is all about. Right now, we are mostly complete with, uh, with the car. We are now putting together the last bits of technology and the last bits of funding to run the car in 2016. For us, slow speed, 350 kilometers an hour in the UK. We then ship it to South Africa and start working up to supersonic speeds, ultimately targeting 1,300 kilometers an hour next year. And that is a stepping stone to test and develop the car and to learn about the technology, find out how much drag, how the rocket system works, we will then put in a bigger rocket, so in 2017 we will be targeting 1,600 kilometres an hour. A structured two-year programme, sharing every bit of it on the way. Over the next two years it's going to be a very, very exciting adventure and I hope everybody gets to join in. Well our plan basically is 2016 next year is the really exciting year. So first of all, we've got to do UK trials and sort the car out, make sure we know exactly what we've, uh, what we've got. Uh, then we fly to South Africa and uh, probably about September, October, we start running in South Africa and we want to run to about 800 miles an hour, just marginally supersonic. Then we've got to bring the car back. We've got to uh, uh, make any kind of changes that are necessary from what we've learned. We've got to add another couple of nano rockets. So we end up with three rockets and the EJ200 engine. And then we go out again in 2017, about the same time in 2017, uh, to finish it off and get our thousand miles an hour. We would love Japan to join this project. We absolutely would. And it's now a big global campaign. And when we run the car, remember that we're going to export from this car a vast amount of data, which is going to be followed in all the schools and in all the universities. And we have a large uh, American company which is interested in, in actually doing all the dissemination of the data and we need the universities involved all over the world. So if they'd like to make contact with me, I'd be very keen to talk. Well, of course you can. <laughs> um, the, the main thing really is the tail. And on the tail we've got 30,000 names of people supporting all this. So I'd like to ask our friends in Japan to buy a large number of spaces on the tail and uh, travel with us when we get to a thousand miles an hour. <laughs>